and and you're right. The momentum was building and building and building that it's Ben Johnson and Adam Peters. I heard it the moment they hired Adam Peters. The moment they hired Adam Peters, I had a couple of different people say to me, look, I knew this was happening four weeks ago, and my reaction was, well, thanks for telling me. But it was one of those things where they're very discreet, very careful, but within a fairly tight circle, people knew that Adam Peters was going to get that job. Right. And then, boom, he's going to hire Ben Johnson. Not might, not could, not would, will. Right. And they were tied together. And this is where, and I don't want to, look, I, PR staffs have a lot to deal with, but one of the challenges is, and, and this is where, like, sometimes when I'm talking to PR people from teams, I'll give them the benefit of what I'm hearing just so they can factor that into what they're saying. Because sometimes when you're in the bubble, you don't know what people are saying. You don't, they don't tell it to you the same way they tell it to others. Yeah, and right. I'll tell them, look, here's what people are saying. Right. I don't know. I don't care whether it's right or wrong. Yeah. This is what they're saying, just so you know what you got to push yeah. back against yeah. if it's not true. Right. Right. And and they're saying, they're saying you're gonna hire this guy. You just need to know it because you need to have a strategy. If it's not gonna happen and an expectation's been created among your fan base that you're gonna hire him, you better make sure they don't have that expectation. You better make sure that it doesn't look like he was your first choice and he said Ah, no, thank you. It still smells too much like Dan Snyder around here. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 I hear you there. I don't know what happened. I, you know, we'll see. I, I, these are the kind of stories that I feel like, you know, either you or me kind of find out two to three weeks kind of after it all happens, and you kind of start to hear from people we know or trust in the league about, you know, what the details, oh, why wait. Ben Johnson didn't want to do it, whatever. Yeah. Uh, but, but huge blow. I think it's a huge blow to the Commanders. I really do. You, you you got a guy like again that I think is special. We we're, we're seeing we've saw that. I mean, it was up and down the field on the 49ers the other day. Uh, they they couldn't stop them. Still don't know he can be a head coach. No. Still don't know he we can don't. take over the team. No, Still we don't. Still don't know that. You're right. We don't know that for sure. You're right. The, the only reason we'll, we'll, I give we'll, you Ladies and gentlemen, I give you Brad Childress. Well, I hear you, but would lead me to believe that he'd be a guy that can, right? Is the fact that he works for Dan Campbell. Dan Campbell, most of the guys on that staff are those kind of guys. Like, I can control the room. I'm not into BS and politics. I know how to football, talk to the guys there. I don't think Dan Campbell would let a guy uh, be the, the offensive coordinator of his, his football team if he didn't feel like he had those qualities to command. But you're right. We got to see it. But it is a big blow to the commanders. One, because of the offensive mind. We know that's what fans gravitate towards. And the commanders are in a quarterback conundrum right now. And who would be better to – oh, wait, we got this guy to either make Sam Howell better and he looks at the film and goes, wait, I like this, or he helps us with that decision to say, hey, let's move on. We could do better and I could find better in the draft and start to groom somebody and have something special here. That's where I feel for the commanders. That's where I think they really lose out uh, with, with not getting Ben Johnson. Hi, it's Mike Florio. Thanks for watching PFT on YouTube. Hit subscribe for the latest news and analysis from Pro Football Talk.